Good morning or good afternoon. It's Miss Bauer here, and today we're going to talk about arcs and angle measures. So, what we're going to get into is the angle and arc measures, arc and angle measures, which is different than what we did the other day with arc length. So, it's not arc length where we have to set up a proportion or any of that. It goes back to measures. So, just for example, we talked about central angles in a circle. And let's just say that that central angle is 50 degrees. Well, then the measure of this arc is 50 degrees. So that's the angle and arc measures. It's not the length of it, but if the central angle is 50, then the measure of this arc would be 50. And what we're going to get into today is what if it's not a central angle and the rule's different. It's like a central angle and the arc have the same measure. So like if that's 50, that's 50. Um, over here, if I were going to make this a central angle and I said this is 40, then the measure of the arc would be 40. But a lot of times we don't have the central angle, we have other angles. So if you think back, remember we talked about angles on the edge of the circle and those are called inscribed angles. So that's an inscribed angle right there. And this triangle is also actually an inscribed angle right there. And inscribed angles also open up to an arc as well. So that's an inscribed angle and there's the arc measure that goes with it. Over here, here's an inscribed angle. And if I look at the ends and I measure around, there's the arc that goes with it. And so this right here, if you notice, this is a semicircle. And so that angle right there we have opens up to a semicircle. So it's not just central angles anymore, but we have these other angles. So if we take a look at our formula chart, we already know that this angle right here that's on the edge of the circle is an inscribed angle. And if you want to go ahead and draw a picture of a central angle, you are more than welcome to do that. Central angles have the same measure. So like if that right there, so there's my central angle. Central angles have the same measure. Whereas some of these other angles don't. So an inscribed angle that's on the edge, if the arc is 40, the central angle would be 40, but the inscribed angle would be 20. Anytime I go into the circle, I'm actually gonna half the measure of the arc. So if this arc is 50 and I go into the angle, then the angle would be 25 degrees. And if this is 20 degrees and I go out to the arc, then it would double, so it would be 40 degrees. So just think of it, if you're going out of the circle to the arc, it's gonna double, because we're going outside. I like to think of it as getting ready. If I'm going out, I'm probably gonna take twice as long to get ready than if I was just staying in and watching a movie. So if you're going out, think it's going to double, so it's going to be times 2. So if this were 40, then that would be 80 if I'm going out. But if you're going inside the circle, then it's going to half. So inscribed angles, if you go out, it will double times 2. But if you go in, you'll divide by 2, you'll half it. But there's not just inscribed angles, there's all of these other angles. So an inscribed angle is made with a chord and a chord. But we also have these angles over here that are made with a chord. And then if we remember, the thing that just taps the circle one time is a tangent. So these are made with a chord and a tangent. So a chord and a tangent. So these are made with chord and tangents. Now, I have these weird little nicknames that I use for these that just help me kind of keep things straight and have everything kind of organized. So while it is a chord and a tangent, I like to think of these as wannabes. Now that's not a math term, that's just a term that I use that helps me keep all of these angle and arc measure rules straight. Because a wannabe is kind of like an inscribed angle, but not quite. It's kind of half in, half out. But wannabes will follow the exact same rule as an inscribed angle. So instead of a chord and a chord, if you have a chord and a tangent, it doesn't really matter. If this angle right here is 40 and I go out to this arc, then it would just be 80 degrees because I would double it. And if I told you that this arc right here is 100 degrees and I went into the angle, so inside the circle, half of 100 would be 50. So I like to think of these as wannabes because they follow the same rule as an inscribed. If I go out times 2, and if I go in, I'm going to divide by 2. So 
I have inscribed angles and I have one of these and they both follow the same rule. But now we're gonna get into some other ones. So this right here, it could be made with a secant and a secant, because remember that secants go all the way out of the circle, but it also could be made with a chord and a chord. And if I notice what happens is I'll give you those arcs on the edge and I want you to find this angle. And we do know that this angle and this angle would be the same because they're vertical angles. I call these crisscross. because they make a little crisscross. So crisscross right there. Okay, the crisscross rule says that while these ones are going times two or divide by two, the crisscross rule has a little bit more work. The crisscross rule says that I need to add the arcs and then divide it by two to go in. So the crisscross rule says that I'm gonna add the arcs and then divide by two since I'm going in. So for example, if this were 20 and this were 30, I would add the arcs. So 20 plus 30 is 50. Half of 50 would be 25. That would be those angles in there. So I have inscribed angles, wannabes, crisscrosses, but then I also have what I like to call are these made with lots of different things. So like this one is a secant and a secant. This one is a tangent and a secant. And this one is a tangent and a tangent. But if I notice while all these angles were on the inside, all of these have my angles on the outside. So I like to call these ones all outsiders. Once again, these aren't actual math names. You're not gonna find these out on the internet with their specific rules. This is just a little trick that I like to use to keep these straight. Because whether it's a secant and a secant, or a secant and a tangent, or a tangent and a tangent, all of your outsiders are gonna follow the same rule. And that's instead of adding the arcs and dividing by two, this time we're gonna subtract the arcs because we're outside. So I'm gonna subtract the arcs and then divide by two. So for example, if I know that this piece is 300 and then the rest of the circle would be 360 minus 300 would be 60, I'm gonna subtract 300 minus 60 and then divide it by two to find that outside angle. And remember that you do get to use this formula chart, so make sure that you have all of these little tips and tricks on there for yourself. So going back to this one, if this is 50, the central angle, well, I need to remember that this outside arc right here, this arc measure would also be 50 degrees because the central angle and the arc measure are the same. But if I wanted to find this inscribed angle, well, remember that whenever I go into the circle, ask yourself, would I multiply it by two or would I divide it by two? And if we're going into the circle, so we're going into the circle inside, we're gonna end up halving it. So 50 divided by two would make this one 25 degrees. So if this were 100, then that would be 100 and then I would go in. So remember if I go in, I'm dividing it by two. Now over here, it tells us the AC is a diameter, which means that this arc right here, semicircle, half of a circle is half of 360, which would be 180 degrees. And if I go in, well, what's half of 180? There's a box right there that gives us a clue. That would be 90 degrees. So that's just an example of if we go in, we divide by two, and if we go out, then we multiply by two. And these are for inscribed angles, which are probably your most popular angle. So let's take a look at this first one. It says find the measure of the missing inscribed angle or arc. So we really just need to figure out, we know it's inscribed, so we're going to multiply by two or divide by two, and we really just need to figure out which one. So if we're going in, remember we're gonna go in, we're gonna divide by two. If we're going out, we're gonna multiply by two. So when I say out or in, I mean like here's my circle. I have this arc, I'm going into the angle, so I would divide by two. So 90 divided by two would make that angle 45 degrees. Okay, taking a look at the next one, I have 38 degrees inside the circle and I'm going outside the circle. So I wanna know what's the measure of this arc. Well, if I'm going out, I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'm going to give you a minute to think. So 38 times 2 would make that 
76 degrees. Okay, over here, if I know that this arc right here is 158 degrees and I'm going in, think, would you multiply by two or divide by two? Well, we're going in, so divide by two. So 158 divided by two would make that 79 degrees. And then over here, well, I see this box and I'm going out. So if I'm going out, think, would I multiply by two or divide by two? If I'm going out of the circle, I would multiply by two. 90 times two is 180, which means that we have a semicircle right here. And that's it. Now, we need to be careful sometimes when it moves around other parts of the circle. So for example, this one's the measure of angle A, which is right here. So I need the arc, if I trace the measure of angle A, I need this arc right here in order to find angle A. Well, I know that this piece is 54 and I know that that's a diameter that cuts my circle in half. So I'm gonna have to think for a second. If I cut the circle in half, that means that this whole part right here would be 180 degrees. And if this piece is 54, well then 180 minus 54 would make the measure of this arc, the rest of the semicircle, 126 degrees. And where these problems get tricky is that I have those other steps. I have to deal with that part first before I can find this angle. Well, now that I found that arc is 126 degrees, asking ourselves if we go into the circle think would i divide by two or multiply by two and if i'm going in i would divide by two so 126 divided by two means that angle a would equal 63 degrees so i need to be really careful with some of these problems because what it's asking me for isn't quite what goes with it it's like this was 54 but that doesn't help me find angle a I need this arc, so I had to use 54 to find that arc right there. Okay, taking a look, this next one wants angle K, which is here. So if I trace it, well, angle K opens up to this arc right here, that's arc JM. Okay, well, I have, the only number that I have is 28 with this angle. So if I look at it, 28 traces that angle. Well, I need arc JM to find this one. Well, look, if I go out, so multiply by 2, so 28 times 2 would make this 56. And then if I go back in again, well, 56 divided by 2 would just make angle K 28. Problems like this look really confusing with all these angles and all these arcs. But if I trace these angles and actually look, angle L and angle K are going to the exact same arc. If I look at it, angle L opens to arc JM, and so does angle K opens to arc JM. So problems like this, while they look really difficult, if they're going to the same arc, if that angle is 28, well, then the other angle has to be 28 because they're going to the same arc, therefore they should have the same measure. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to look at these next two problems, asking yourself, how would you find those parts? Is there any tricks, anything that you could use? and then we'll pick back up in the next video. Be sure to be using that colored formula chart if you need help on those problems.